All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, here to talk about Category 1 hurricane that's going to be hitting the uh, state of Connecticut directly and the region more broadly uh, starting uh, first thing uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, it's called Hurricane Henri Category 1. I don't think the name Henri or Category 1 do justice to the severity of what this storm could represent. Brenda just reminded me that Superstorm Standy was not even a, a Category 1 hurricane. And look what that uh, exacted on our state and our region. Uh, this is particularly severe because it's going to be eight plus inches of rainfall on top of tons of rainfall that we've had over the last week. And that means our ground is saturated. That means our ground sitting on top of non-porous ledge is uh, like a sponge and there's no more um, absorbent and that leads to flooding. Uh, you combine that with the fact that we're going to have an astronomical tide. A I mean astronomical in the sense that we have a very full moon, the highest tides uh, you can have. That combined with the wind gives real risk of flooding along the coastline and interior flooding given the uh, saturation of the soil. Saturation of the soil combined uh, with the fact that we could have 70, 80 mile an hour winds, that um, makes the trees a lot less secure. They go over, power goes out, and uh, Eversource and UI um, have warned us that there could be hundreds of thousands of outages over the next um, you know, few days and beyond. Uh, that said, I'm standing here with some folks here at the Emergency Operations Center, and I want you to know that uh, I don't think Connecticut has ever been as well prepared for a storm as we are for um, Hurricane Henri. Uh, we're working very closely, as you can imagine, with our utilities in particular, Eversource, United Illuminating, and they're assuring us that they're going to have twice as many people on the ground pre-positioned as we had a year ago. That makes a big difference and we're going to be able to respond faster and respond in a way that uh, does everything we can to keep you safe. The other thing that uh, we've worked on very closely with um, the utilities as well as the telecom companies, and if you go back here at the Emergency Operations Center, the big round uh, table with the uh, boards in front, we've had all the commissioners, you know, that's DOT, Transportation, DEEP, We've got General Yvonne representing the Guard. We've got 200 Guard who have been activated, doing everything we can to make sure the lines of communication are clear. I do not want any confusion in terms of what's going on out there. You'll be able to call at any time you want 211, our emergency line, or even better, go to the online 211.org and you'll be able to get the current information, what's happening. Uh, they are plugged into each of our regional um, operations centers, so they'll be able to tell you by region exactly what is being remedied and how fast it can be remedied. Along the way, we just uh, met with um, all the mayors and others uh, remotely, of course, and made sure that they op activate their emergency operations center town by town. Each of those operations centers is going to have a representative of the utilities uh, assigned to that so they get immediate response in terms of trees down. I can't promise you the trees are going to be back up and your know, power is back up within 48 hours, but I can tell you we're going to get, be able to do the best we can to get you a response in order to uh, keep you safe. Look, I think we found out from ICA um, the hard way that uh, electricity is not a nice to have. Electricity is an absolutely essential service. We know what it means in terms of medicine. We know what it means in terms of uh, food. We know what it means in terms of the fact that next week we could have 90 degree weather. We're tracking very closely those most at risk, including, for example, our nursing homes. Making sure that if they're right in the uh, eye of the storm, if they have to evacuate, we know where they can be evacuated to. Making sure that we have the standby power so we can keep the cooling centers uh, available and we can keep people safe. Uh, I just urge you on a personal note, um, as I've said before, uh, two things. Uh, stay safe, stay home. Get yourself a little extra gasoline. Make sure you have... Um, your phone's all charged. Uh, make sure you have uh, three, four, five days worth of food uh, stored. Make sure you have the phone number of uh, some people that maybe are living alone and uh, need a little extra assurance so you can reach out to them and care for them and make sure they're taken care of. But I can tell you here on behalf of uh, you know Susan and myself and all the folks at the Emergency Operations Center, um, we're prepared for what could be um, a tough storm. 
and uh, we're going to hold the utilities accountable. But right now, we've got the folks on the ground ready to hit the ground running and do everything we can to keep you safe. With that, um, any of us here are happy to take any questions. Uh, Governor, with respect to uh, the transmission corridors, uh, does the state, could you talk a little bit about the, the due diligence on keeping those clear from trees? Have, have those been widened? Has the state looked at that? Uh, we have. We've been working closely with the um, utilities, making sure that we've done a lot of tree trimming. We get some grief about that, by the way, but making sure that there are less trees vulnerable to uh, crashing down, especially on the major uh, distribution networks, the major electric distribution. So I think there's been progress there, and um, I hope you see that progress. Talk to me about the kind of crews that are going to be on the ground out there tomorrow. I know you mentioned them a little bit, utility companies, Department of Transportation. Can you elaborate a little bit on their roles during the storm? Yeah, I'll start, and then I'd like to hand it over to Brenda, who's really been overseeing things here inside the center. But um, look, first and foremost, we assess the damage. Secondly, we have uh, the tree teams, making sure that we can uh, assess um, what wires are hot, which are not hot, so we can get those uh, roads cleared as quickly as possible. We focused on those densest tree lines, like this uh, guy was just asking, so that those densest uh, distribution, so that activates the most number of houses and homes and to get the electricity on for them fastest. But Brenda, you want to talk a little more about that? Thank you, Governor. Yes, we're working very closely under our unified command with state agencies, working with municipalities. We have a number of task forces set up, including um, a transportation task force that includes the National Guard, Department of Correction, Department of Transportation, our agency, um, and others to figure out if there's a need for either rescue or um, evacuation support for municipalities, we stand ready to help them. The state has a state urban search and rescue team, which has been activated by the governor and is um, preparing to be ready to, to, be, to be deployed if we need it for swift water rescue um, for, or for any other purpose. Um, we continue to have, we, we work under what's called the state response framework and we have emergency support functions which is basically everybody working together to, to complete a mission. And so we have many, many different organizations, um, both public and sector and private sector working together to help to answer any requests that come in from municipalities. And we work through a regional process where we have five regional coordinators and all the requests can come in through them um, and then be posted here so that we can find the appropriate resource to help them. Can someone uh, address evacuations and just the process of making sure that people will be notified um, tomorrow if, if any other evacuations uh, take place? For instance, is there going to be a, a warning and then a mandatory evacuation? Just, just tell us a little bit about that so people can be prepared. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, the, the municipalities that have traditionally um, evacuation zones, flood evacuation zones, there are flood maps that are posted on our websites and the towns have them. They communicate all the time with their, their residents to make sure that they're aware that they may or may not be in a flood zone. I would love to let everyone know that we have a recent product that's uh, interactive called Know Your Zone, and you can go on it and take a look and see, and we can give you the link, and you can see whether or not your property is in that area. What happens is each town has an emergency management director, and the emergency management director is working with the other municipal officials to make sure that they get the proper locations evacuated if needed. Um, the tendency to need mandatory evacuations at the local level is rare. People are usually very responsive. They're aware of whether or not they're in a flood zone. Um, we stand ready as a state to assist if a municipality is overwhelmed with the needs that they have as they, as they do their evacuations. We send out with the weather um, what's called a HuraVac, which is it shows you when the appropriate times are, the time span to start evacuations, when you need to stop because the storm is coming. And so we continue to update that and get it to the towns so they can make sure that evacuations take place during the day and long before everything has to be buttoned down while we wait for the storm. You. You're welcome. We've had very close coordination with our federal partners. I uh, just got off the phone, like I said, with um, President Biden. We have our regional FEMA representative. Anything you'd like to add that you can say in terms of the region? 
Thank you, Governor. Um, FEMA is here to support uh, the governor and, and all the state of Connecticut's needs. We've actually been here for uh, well over a year and a half now. Uh, we embed a liaison officer with the state's EOC, uh, Justin Ratti, um, who helps us coordinate any and all needs, not just for the COVID disaster. Um, I was here last year. I want to reiterate what the governor said. This is a hurricane. But even Tropical Storm Isai East last year took out 750,000 power uh, to folks in the state of Connecticut. Um, I was here for that disaster as well, helping the state with the needs there. Uh, we have uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is on standby uh, with generators en route um, and being pre-positioned as well as supplies necessary as the state would request them. FEMA's role during a disaster is to support the governor and his top priorities, and we're here to support like we have been for the last year and a half with COVID and Tropical Storm Isai East. Thank you. Anybody else like to add anything? Susan, you want to say anything in conclusion? Well, I just want to uh, say, because I know that a lot of people are wondering, um, is Eversource prepared? And they've told us that they have 1,471 restoration crews on standby, 506 tree crews, and 600 uh, damage assessors. And they've requested more than that because of the severity of this. So uh, we do want people to know that our utilities uh, seem to be better prepared this time. Who's responsible for uh, you know, connecting with the disability community or the elderly? Is that, is that handled at the local level? So we have a couple of different mechanisms. We actually have ESF-15, remember I was talking about emergency support functions. We have a, an ESF-15 uh, diverse communities group. And when we have a press release go out or something else go out, we send it to that group, and the group then gets it out to their communities. So we, we, uh, we continue to always encourage other groups to join that communications flow so we can make sure that all the messages get out in the appropriate languages, through the appropriate processes, depending on what the, what the functional need is. And your question, I think, really goes to um, a reminder to everyone to check on neighbors that are elderly, that are disabled, that may need extra help, uh, I think it's really important to do as we prepare. With that, let me just say, I know this is the last 10 days of August and you're all looking forward to a little bit of relaxation after what's been a pretty uh, tough uh, year and a half. Um, we got a little bit more to go through. I want you to really err on the side of caution for the next uh, three, four, five days. and. Uh, we're going to get through this together. Thanks, everybody.